this month it's all about tales from the Norse lands and this is the first of my pre-recorded video stories for you. Now as you know about 80% of my stories are, are family friendly uh, but I do let you know if there's some content in it that you might not want we one sitting and listening to. And this is one of those because this is a Norse myth that involves the trickster Loki. And there is a scene in it, well, that involves a goat's private parts, shall we say. So, I hope you will enjoy this story. It's a good laugh, as all Loki stories are. But just bear in mind that it does have that imagery in it. I'll just introduce you to some of the characters as well before I get going. So we have the standard Odin. Odin the Allfather is in most of the Norse myths, most of them, but not all of them. There is also Loki because there are many, many of the stories include Loki because he's the trickster and he's what gets them all into trouble, or rather himself into trouble and then he has to get himself out of trouble. There also in this story is Skadi. Now, Skadi, Skadi is um, a giantess. She is the daughter of Thiazi, who, if you have listened to Iden's Apples, you'll know has now lost her father, Thiazi. So Skadi is one of the main characters in this story. And Njord is another character in the story as well. Njord is the god of the sea. He is the god of the sea harvest, so he's a god of sailors and a god of fishermen. So without further ado, let us begin the story of the marriage of Njord and Skadi. On the day that Thiazi left to pursue Loki across the Nine Worlds to retrieve Aiden, who Loki was taking back. Skadi waited for her father. She waited in the castle Thrymheim, in the land of Jotunheim, the land of the giants. But in this part of that land, there was nothing but storms, nothing but ice and snow. And as Skadi waited, waited for Thiazi to return, the sun set on the ninth day and she knew, she knew that there was no other explanation other than the gods had ambushed him and that her father was now dead. There was only one thing now on Skadi's mind and that was revenge. She went down to the bottom of the castle where all the armoury was kept and she found the best mail she could. She found a helmet that shone in the sun and in the moon. She found her father's sword carved with a serpent upon it. She found a spear made of the sacred ash. And finally, she found a shield with an eagle engraved upon it. Now she was ready. Now she would go to the land of the Azir, Asgard, and she would seek her revenge. She would have justice for Thiazi's death. And so it was that she set off across the Nine Worlds. Back in Asgard, the gods, they did not know that there was anything wrong. They had Iden back, they had their immortality. They had the apples back. And Thiazi, well, he was no longer a problem. So they did not see that there was anything else to be worried about. Until that was Heimdall at the end of the Bifrost, Heimdall the Allseer, saw Skadi approaching across the Nine Worlds and he knew who this was. He knew this was the daughter of the great giant Thiazi and he knew that dressed as she was in the mail and the helmet and the spear and the shield and the sword, there was only one thing that she could possibly want with the gods and that was revenge. As she approached Heimdall, on the Bifrost, he took her to Odin. Odin had been prepared by Heimdall for Skadi's arrival. And he stopped her with calm, firm words. He said, let us have no more bloodshed. 
Let us put an end to this feud. It is pointless and it serves no one. Very well, said Scardy, but I will have satisfaction in this matter. Well, what is it that you want, said Odin? Okay. I want a husband and I want a belly full of laughter because I have not laughed since my father died. My heart is cold and is ice. And I doubt very much anyone can thaw it. Even you, she said, looking at the bold and beautiful boulder. It was him. It was him that she had a mind to marry. But the other gods, they weren't so sure about that. Boulder was beautiful. There was no way that they were going to let him marry a giant. And so Odin devised a game, if you like. And he said to Skadi, that's fine, we can give you both of those things. I promise you both those things, but we're going to do it our way. For you to choose a husband, you must choose him only by his feet. That's right. She had to look at their feet and choose which man she would marry. And so they held up a large cloth in front of the gods that lined up behind. And Skadi walked up and down, looking at the feet. Some slightly hobbled, some slightly curled, some that hadn't had the toenails cut properly, some that frankly smelt. And then there were these beautiful feet, majestic, perfectly formed. They must be the feet of Boulder. So Scardi chose those. This is the man I will marry, she said. The man that owns these feet. From behind the sheet stepped forward the leathered, weathered face of Njord, the god of sailors and fishermen, the god of plenty, god of abundance. And he smiled, laughter lines in his eyes. Very well, he says, and I will be happy to take you as my wife. Skadi was so angry, furious. She felt she had been tricked because it was Boulder that she wanted. And she went to say something. And as she opened her mouth, the fury in her eyes flaming, Njord said, mind, be careful. Whatever you say now sets us out on the path that our marriage will be. Tuscardi stopped for a moment, but she could not stop herself from saying, I am tricked. But Odin wasn't having any of it. You will marry Njord. Njord is a good man. He will look after you and you will want for nothing. Skadi was not pleased. Well, I have not had the second half of my deal. I have not had a belly full of laughter, she said. Very well, said Odin. Loki, come here. If there is one person in this place that can give you a belly full of laughter, it's Loki. Loki stepped forward tentatively, a little concerned that Skadi may know that he did actually have something to do with the death of her father. He didn't get too close for this reason. Skadi looked Loki up and down and went, how can he make me laugh with his tricks and his cunning? I do not think so. I do not think I can make you laugh either, said Loki. But I had a little story, something that happened to me this morning, which is reasonably amusing. You might like to hear it. Very well, said Skadi. Do your best. It involves this goat here, said Loki. That's not a particularly funny goat, said Skadi. Looks like a fairly regular goat to me. I hope it's not one of mine, said Thor. No, don't worry, Thor. It's not one of your goats. This is a goat that I was taking to market, said Loki. Now, the thing is, I was taking many other things to market as well, and my hands were really full. But I had to lead that goat somehow. And so I tied a thong around its neck, a leather thong. 
And I thought, where am I to tie the other end? I cannot hold it in my hands. I do not wish to tie it to my foot. The goat will have me over. And so it was, my lady Scardy, that I tied it to my particulars. You tied it to your what? said Scardy. I tied it to my testicles, said Loki. Well, Scardy was trying hard not to laugh. But then Loki decided he was going to demonstrate what had happened. And he tied a leather thong around the neck of the goat and he tied the other end around his testicles. And he demonstrated what happened as they walked. As he cheed up the goat and the goat walked, <laughs> went the goat, <gasps> went Loki. Every step that goat took, Loki howled out in pain. <laughs> 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 And Scardy began to laugh. She laughed, a belly full of laughter. Enough, said Odin. Loki was released. He removed the thong. Thankfully, fairly unharmed. Got nothing more than Loki, quite frankly, deserves. So now Scardy had her laughter and she had her husband. And so it was. Scardy and Yord began their lives together. But where they lived, Thrymheim and Noatun, very different places. Thrymheim was cold, ice cold, full of storms, thunder and lightning. Now, Njord, he was used to thunder and lightning. After all, he lived with Thor. But he preferred the sea, where he could hear the seagulls and the rocking of the waves as he slept. He could smell the salt. It was where he wished to live. And neither of them could really decide where they wanted to live. And so they came to an agreement that they would live nine days in Thrymheim and nine days in Noatun. And so that is what they did. And it worked for a while. In the nine days in Thrymheim, Njord grew colder and colder and colder until they headed back across to Noatun where Scardy became more and more seasick with the smell of the salt and the rocking of the waves and the screaming of the gulls. And then they would go back to Thrymheim. It was too much for the both of them. They decided that eventually this arranged marriage was not working. And so it was that Njord and Scardy went their separate ways, despite being married. Scardy returned to Thrymheim and she never bothered the gods again. But she soon had her snowshoes on. She was off out hunting with her spear and her father's sword. And this would be the way that she would spend her life. And wherever she went, she brought death or injury. Because you see, dear listener, that there are some injuries that cannot be healed, no matter how hard you want them to be. And it is such that we have to find a way to live around them. And this is what Skadi does, hunting in the snowy lands of Jotunheim. That is the marriage of Njord and Skadi, and it follows on from the myth of uh, the theft of Iden's apples. I hope you enjoyed that story, and I love the way that the uh, lands where Njord and Skadi live uh, are so utterly different. Uh, and so barren in their own ways and so different and so alien and how we can find our roots in a place and we can try and be in another place but that place will always call us and I think that's what that story says to me. Skadi, Skadi suffered terrible loss in that story and she was tricked and it is no wonder that she turns to hunting instead of love. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll be back later in the month with one of my family stories. This one will be Why the Sea is Salt. I'll see you next time. Toodle pip. Mm -hmm.